All right, hello everyone. Uh, it's Henry and Henry again. We're going to Pulp Boys. We're going to do a video on uh, the handling of handgun. I have seen uh, I've seen on some forums where there are a lot of new shooters and not a, a lot of new people that are unfamiliar with handgun um, or they're unfamiliar with firearms in general. So that includes shotgun and rifle too. And uh, they very proudly post their pictures um, of their target results, and which is a great thing, by the way. I think that's a good thing. Do post your pictures and share your videos too. But I've noticed that in watching these videos and in looking at their pictures, um, they're making some shooter errors, configuration errors as it goes to handling of the firearm that with very minor, easy update and correction and just a little bit of tutelage, just a little bit, they can go from, as I have told my kids for years and years, they can go from something to something else. And so what I'm gonna do today, we're, my son Henry and I, we're gonna make a quick video using a air pistol. Now this, this air pistol fires BBs. It is a Crossman product that is a uh, facsimile of the Walther, Walther uh, compact pistol, CP, and it fires BBs. It does not fire uh, uh, um, any other projectile. But what is interesting and unique about this product and the reason that I purchased it is that it has a real recoil. The slide does move as it fires. Now this is a good thing because it then imitates recoil, felt recoil. As well, the fire or the, the, the gun, it's not a firearm, it's pneumatic, but the pistol handgun uh, is the same size, same function. It is a direct one-to-one -one analog of the real pistol. So it is a, a, it's a copy. And I have used, I've had this thing for a long time, over a decade, and I use it toward either students who are brand new, outright, they're complete new, uh, to the handling of firearms. They may have some anxiety, they may have some nerves, and I will use this to help them get over that, and I've been successful in that way. Um, also, I will use it toward persons that are having either grip or trigger manipulation errors. And in those errors, in those errors that I see, I can help them, I can help them diagnose the problem, correct the problem, and then once we have the problem corrected using this, we then move to a real firearm. Typically, I will move them to a 22. And then from 22, once they can duplicate what they've learned, we'll then move on to whatever their uh, particular uh, duty arm might be, um, or in the case of a civilian, their, their carry gun. Um, so I like to do things in a slow and progressive manner so you can build skills upon skills upon skills and then you have layers of good foundational capability as opposed to just jumping right in and then having to fix errors, which are difficult and sometimes expensive to undo. All right, so with all that said, it's a lot of words. With all that said, Henry, who's 14, is going to be my uh, student. I could show you what I mean, but being honest and fair, it wouldn't be honest or fair. I've been handling firearms for a very long time, so if I tried to demonstrate this for you, um, whether I meant to or not, it could easily be said that I'm simply fashioning the results. Whereas with my son, he's never handled this, this particular firearm, this particular uh, handgun before. In fact, he has never handled a, a handgun at all. So this will be a completely new experience with the new shooter. He has only operated uh, uh, rifles. So the experience is completely different for him. And then with that, I'm gonna work with him starting from a baseline of just seeing how he operates. I'm gonna give him the, go over the use of the, of the handgun first and the uh, safety aspects, of course. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and have him shoot um, two or three or four BBs I'm so used to saying hand, firearm and rounds and et cetera. Have them shoot two or three or four BBs 
into the target and backstop that I've got set up. And this is in a safe space, um, safe environment, uh, everything uh, following standard protocols, but we are indoors as opposed to jumping in the car and driving 40 minutes to the range, just not sensible. And so once we get a baseline for him as far as, as aspect it goes to errors and shooting errors, then I'm gonna do some correction with him and you will be able to see firsthand the difference between something and something else. Okay, so we're back and I set up the pistol so that, so that uh, it's functioning. I set up the uh, CO2 cartridge in it and I discovered that the recoil spring on it has gotten loose or weak. And so it fires, discharges, but the slide doesn't go back into full battery, um, which is a problem. I'll disassemble the gun later and, and repair it. But for the purpose of this video, it's still, it's still gonna work out for us. So I gave the pistol to Henry, I transferred it to Henry, and he's holding the firearm, the pistol right now, in a manner that to him feels natural. But it is not correct. And so I have not fixed it for him yet. I wanted to show this to you guys because this is something that you're going to see commonly. And so what he did is he took the firearm with his right hand, with this hand, and then he connected with his support hand, but he's got his thumb over the webbing of his, of his dominant hand, of his strong hand. And that's a problem because this is what will happen. If you can resist while I pull back, and you see that? What will happen is the gun, the gun will strike the thumb of the support hand, and this is called among the shooter's world um, as leaving a railroad track. It'll be two lines, you'll be bleeding, and it'll be full of gun, gun uh, residue, and it'll hurt and sting, and you'll never do it again, but you'll learn this the hard way. But because Henry's my student and he's my son, I'm not gonna set him up for failure. I'm gonna give him the pro tips that he needs to succeed rather than fail. All right, so what I'm gonna do, Henry, is I'm just gonna move your thumb, okay? Now you see how you've got your two thumbs there? Mm -hmm. What I'd like you to do is put that thumb up for a moment and I'd like you to move that. You see how that naturally fit? Yeah. I didn't even have to tell you, yep. So that space, you naturally fit and now, What's going to happen is this thumb is going to be right at the frame, but not on the slide, mm -hmm. okay? Right at the frame. And then that thumb, talk about train tracks, is going to be choo-choo's, like engine, <laughs> right? right? The engine and the caboose. Engine and the caboose, okay? Right. Further, these two thumbs running along the side of the gun are going to help you aim. Right. Even if the gun didn't have sights, you can use these two thumbs as long as they are running parallel to the bore, right? Mm -hmm. They're running parallel to the bore. That will give you a gross, G-R-O-S-S, -S, not gross like nasty, but gross as in, as in large and fuzzy. Right. Give you a gross manner of sight, a bore alignment, not sight alignment, because again, we're imagining the sights don't exist. They'll give you a, a gross alignment of the bore towards your target. And go ahead and just point the gun in that direction. And for those watching, this is our target downrange. I've got a, a cardboard box set up that's got a foam filler inside of it. We have a nine inch paper plate with a three and a half inch, um, three by five inch uh, card uh, uh, index card and then we have a backer that's behind that uh, and an old rug behind the, the cardboard box even though these are BBs they are not going to penetrate I like to be on the safe side and then I've got a, a lamp illuminating everything so Henry go ahead and, uh, and extend and see even if you don't use the sights and all that you do is just use that those two thumbs as your index you're going to hit the, at the very least, in a gross manner, you're going to hit the box. Right, because I can just point my thumb at the... Exactly. Yeah. You're just pointing your thumbs, and where your thumbs go, which are right next to the bore, the bore is going to go. 
Right. So at the very least, you're gonna hit the box, okay? And then everything else from there is fine alignment. So you can bring it into your body. What I'm gonna do is show you how to do that. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna bring it in. You just, all that you're doing is bending your elbows, okay? You're just building your elbows. And yes, you've got a little bit of rotation and that's just natural biomechanics. Got a little bit of rotation in the gun as you bring it in closer to what's called your workspace, all right? This is your workspace. This is where when you're manipulating the firearm, you're changing magazines or what have you, you're doing work and this is the space, workspace. Okay, so we're back and I've loaded the magazine with BBs. So I'm gonna hand it to Henry and he's going to, Henry, keep, your, keep the firearm up in your workspace, all right? And you're gonna rotate, there you go. So you can see what you're doing and you can go ahead and insert the magazine Yep, goes right on in, nice, very nice. Good job, dude. All right, and then you're gonna go ahead and choo-choo train your hands. Always keep the muzzle that way, right? Yep, all right, and go ahead and bring it up. And when you have your sights aligned, you can take a shot at the paper plate, please. Oh, the safety's off. All, all right, safety's so off. we'll need to take the safety off. If that means moving your body so that the bore is that way, right? Here, I'll do it. All right. Do you have your red, red mm -hmm. you're dead? Mm -hmm. Okay. It's not red on here though. That's because it's not cocked. Oh. All right, so you need to manually cock it. There you go. Okay, it's red now. All right, set your hands up. And take your shot alignment. Again, at the paper plate, please. And when you're ready, can touch the trigger. All right, and you'll have to push the slide forward a little bit, just bump it. All right, take your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. All right, and do you see where you hit? Yeah, it's all at the top, like it's all, Yep, edge. it's way at the top edge. Yeah. All right, so what was your sight picture? Where were you, where were you aiming at that? At green, that, uh, green dot. At the green dot. All right, so, Sight picture meaning when you were looking at the target, you had your sights aligned in a point, some point in space, right? Mm -hmm. You follow? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you had your, your sights aligned at some point in space. And the, wherever that point in space was that you had your sights, the gun actually hit high. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to have you do, let's go ahead and set up the gun again. Go ahead and extend the finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. All right. What I'm gonna have you do is just make sure that that grip is good. Very good, just like that, very good. Okay, and you're going to look either through the rear sight to the front sight and put the front sight just below the green dot. Okay, so not on it, just below. Or you're going to look over the top of the front, the rear sight, over top of the front sight, yep. and again, you're going to put the, the dot just below that, and you're going to shoot with both eyes open. Yep. Okay? So go ahead and give it another try. High right. High right. He's <laughs> also on the border. Like, um,. Okay, if it's a clock, it's at uh, two o'clock. All right, I'm gonna take the gun from you. Thank you, and let's go look at it. Here. Yep. Or one o'clock, yes. Yes, because this is 12 o'clock. Yeah, one o'clock. Yeah. All right. All right, we'll go back to the chair. All right, so again, modify your sight picture. You know what you need to do. And when you're ready. That one just fell right out of the... Oh, well, I, it's got to impress it forward. Yeah, 
All right, now you gotta cock it manually because it's not cocked. All right. Look at that. Now let's see where you hit. Yep. What did you do? What did you do differently? What did you change of your sight picture? Uh, I didn't. I just tensed up my arms more. Okay. Very good. All right. Let's do it again and fix. Uh, you're out of. You're out of battery. Okay. Very good. Let's do that once more. I don't even know where that was. I do. It was just left. Here, I'm going to take the gun. Uh, put it back in battery, please. I'm gonna hand you're gonna hand me the gun and we're gonna go walk over. See right there? Oh yeah. It went right into 50 cent. You're right on target. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. All right. So we took four shots, right? Yep. Your first one was here, your second one was there. All right. That's basically the same thing. You have a little bit of, of a windage situation going on, but you know. We'll, we'll pretend like that's, it's not a big deal. Okay. Your third shot is here, right? Relative to the dot. So that's rough, roughly an inch and I didn't bring my ruler with me. Yep. Your fourth shot is right on the top of the dot. Yep. Okay, so your fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and 10th shots should be a duplication of that shot. You follow me? Mm -hmm. So now that you know what to look for, and now that you know how to feel the firearm, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a matter, a matter of repeating what you did here to get that same result. Right. All right, let's try it again. All right. And when you're ready, And remember, you have to do. You have to close your battery manually. And close your battery manually. And then that's it. Finger off the trigger, please. Very good. And then let's go look at your target. You're blocking the light, so I can't see. All right. I don't even know where the first one was. So the first one, I don't know either. But that one was your last shot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh wait, is this that it right there? Yep, that's, that's it right it, there. That's it. that's it right there. So I went, I reverted in time. I went back. Yep. All right. <laughs> so let's go back. All right. So extend. Get your sight alignment proper. Finger off the trigger. Get your sight alignment proper. Okay. All right. And the other thing that I is your triangulation is good. So this arm should be. Look, you're fine. This arm should be equidistant to that arm. There should not be, for example, a bend here and straight there. Okay. Okay, yeah. All right, and you'll see that on movies and television. Go ahead and I'm, I'm doing, I'm making you wrong on purpose. You'll see people doing this on movies and television. It's called Weaver. It's a dude for, named Jack Weaver from the, from the mid 60s, early to mid 60s that shot that way. And um, forget about it. it it's, it's not even comfortable. No, it's not comfortable. It's not lasting. He came out with that method uh, to shoot competition. It lasted for a short period, and for some bizarre reason, uh, Hollywood historians have hung on to it and still have people to this day shooting that way for television, trying to look cool and tough, but it's trash. It results in really bad results. All right, so please do the equidistant. Okay, this is called the isosceles. And why would you think it was called isosceles? Do you have an idea? It looks like an isosceles triangle. Bingo. It looks like an isosceles triangle. That's correct. Equidistant legs. This is your base, right? Right. Which means this is your peak. And where your peak is, is where your bore is, right? Right. Okay. All right. So let's rock. Two more, please. Take your time. Oh, that second one is high. You see that? So is the first one. Yeah. All right. So let's do some 
Let's think about your side alignment. I'm going to fix your battery. All right. Let's think about that side alignment. Okay. And let's put that put that front sight below the target. Right. Mm -hmm. The bullseye is the green, so place it below. That's okay. I'll vacuum one later. You don't have to cock it manually now because there's nothing in the, exactly. Oh, there, another one, you lost another one. Finger off the trigger when you're cocking. All right, so cock it once more. Close it, yep. All right, and when you're ready, and you're gonna have to slap it in the battery. Finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire. I am ready to fire. Okay. They're all super high. I'm aiming at the bottom of the uh, plate. Okay. <laughs> and let's go ahead and put the safety back on, please. Excellent. All right, so I'm going to take the firearm from you. Excellent. All right, so uh, a couple of things here, and I forgot to mention in the beginning that the distance between where you're shooting from and to the target, I measured it off, it is 15 feet. 15 feet divided by three, because there's three, three feet in a yard, we're at five yards. So the accuracy for this, as it relates to the sights, okay, everything is hitting high. So then that would mean, you know, and gravity is a constant, right? Mm -hmm. That would mean that then these sights are regulated for something greater than three yards, I'm sorry, five yards. Because if everything, if you're hitting, if you're aiming on the target at X and all of your hits are at Y, then with gravity being a constant pulling back, your, your shot should drop at a further distance. So we're just too close to the target. Or you have to manually drop, you follow what I'm saying? That's what I did. Okay. Well, then I, I will do a few as well, um, but that's basically the situation. So we're at 15 feet, which is five yards, and you're just hitting high. But looking at the target, even inclusive of that fact that you're hitting high, you're still, it's a nine inch plate, and that interior diameter is six inches. So you're still functional in a practical manner. And your dispersion, you've got a lot of vertical but not so much horizontal, right? Come on, we'll go and even look at the target. Let's go, up, go and look at the target up close. I mean... And I'll be right back. I'm gonna get my, my tape measure. All, all right. right, so look at all, and what you, don't block the light so you can see. All right, so this is, we're gonna call that an outlier, which was your first shot. And we're gonna call this one, nope, that one down there. You got one down there. So we'll call that an outlier because those are the two ex away. The extremes, right? Mm -hmm. So the highest one then is over here and the lowest one is here. That right there, six inches, dude. Mm -hmm. Follow? Mm -hmm. So you've got six inches and then your width, the widest is here and then you got the widest, I'm sorry, the widest is here and the widest is there. We take those two out. Your second widest is here and your second widest, I think is that. Five inches, six by five. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, this is pretty darn good. Considering you've never done any of this before and we're using a tool that is less than optimal. <laughs> Right? Right. Or not is that's no lie at all. Right? Right. So and we're at a distance that's too close, obviously, for the regulation of the sites. Mm -hmm. The sites are regulated clearly to be further out. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. rather than closer in because you're aiming when you were aiming here you hit up here mm -hmm. when you were you said you were aiming down here mm -hmm. right you're still hitting up here yeah right and again gravity is a constant so if we increase the distance from being here at 15 feet to the door which would be 20 something feet then this grouping would drop down right you follow mm -hmm. okay all right so pops is going to give a try here and now that i have that intel from you that the re the sights are regulated for further distance i'm probably going to put my point of aim here and see if i can get on the card mm -hmm. all right okay so now I'm in the hot seat, and Henry's going to show uh, focused on me and my hands. That's why my face and what have you is not in the video. It's not relevant. But focusing on my hands, and I'm going to aim for the three by five card and try to put my rounds into the green sticker. Okay? And here we go. So see how my see how my hands are? And this gun is too small for me. That's another thing that I've seen. Uh, um, a lot in people, people's pictures uh, in both video as well as in still pics. People are buying compact firearms, which is fine. Compact is able to fit on your body. You can hide it in your somewhere on your person more easily. <clears throat> but problem is the gun's too big or your hands are too big. Like for me, look how far my finger is relative to the, to the trigger guard. So for me to then get into the trigger, look how much camming I've got to do to my finger. So, but people don't know any better um, because they're just new to firearms or new to handguns in general. And then like here, I'm trying, to, I'm trying to match my hands in, but look how cramped and, and pushed up, compressed my hands are. That's going to, that, that misfit is going to make it more difficult for me to be successful in the sense of getting shots on target in a fine manner. Grossly, yes I can, but in a fine manner, it will be more difficult. So that's something else to consider if, you're, if you own or if you're thinking about purchasing a compact uh, handgun. All right, here we go. And I touched the trigger and I forgot that the safety was on because I got no movement whatsoever. All right, just my glasses. Nope, oh, I'm not charged. There we go. Rookie mistakes. <laughs> okay, this gun doesn't like I. I went in on the tar on the trigger, very slowly, which is my normal method. But as soon as I did that you heard the BB rolled right out of the chamber. So I can't do a slow, com a slow compress on the trigger face. I've got to get on it. Lesson learned. Oh, by the way, look at the target. Mm -hmm. That first shot, I'm just outside of the 25 cent yeah, 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 I see it. mark. Yeah. All right. Ah, that one fell right out as well. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to shoot from a seated position, so that way I'm not I'm not elevated. How about that? Yeah, much better. See where I'm hitting? Mm -hmm. That one was low. You see that? Mm -hmm. Right below the 25 cent. That 
That was just above. I like them too. All right. I think I'm out of ammo. So we'll go ahead and take a take the people to the truck to target. Let's adjust the camera so it shows the, the impacts really well. There you go. There you go. Okay. So this one was my luck. Oh, where's my, uh, stay right there. I'll be right back. Yeah, this was that low shot that I called. Yep. And this was my, my first impact up here. And then, so let's see what we got for a dispersion. We're going to, I'm going to measure from that to my, all right, this is my furthest to the bottom. This is my furthest to the top. So we've got about two inches of dispersion. If I throw out that as the outlier and I throw this out as the outlier, it then becomes basically one inch. Yeah, it's about one inch. Yep, one inch. And then as it goes to, uh, this windage, there basically is no windage. It's less than an inch. Three quarters. Yeah. All right. <laughs> the lesson to learn here, can you, you have okay bit mm -hmm. lighting? The lesson to learn here is that um, in the hands, of same, this is the same gun at the same distance and the same target, but two different shooters. So my son, who was brand new, this is his first opportunity, he was hitting high and his dispersion is what it was. And so my theory was that, okay, move the target back, right? So that we can get this to drop. But then I take the, gun, the same gun and my point of aim was the green dot. So I had my front sight right on the green dot and using the same gun sitting at the same distance this is the result so the lesson to take away from this is two part a it is not the machine necessarily it is the operator b as the operator if you're not getting the results that you want manipulate the conditions to get the results that you need Ding. and if you are a skilled operator and you can use the device, the same tool, etc., then stick to your basic fundamentals. Stick to what you know and don't modify that. So in this case, I didn't go back further. I didn't aim really low. I just stayed at what I know I'm supposed to hit, where I'm supposed to manipulate the trigger. And uh, the results are what they were. Now what's gonna happen for Henry is that over time, and we'll do this more at the range and we'll do some, some transition practicing, but over time, Henry's going to bring that grouping in, 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 in like this, and down, 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 once he gets used to seeing his sight picture and knowing where he needs to hit rel relative to the handling of the gun. And then for me, I already know that what I need to see. I know what my sight picture needs to be. All right. I hope that's not too confusing. Um, if you are confused or if you have any questions, please feel free to, to leave a comment. I'll do my best to respond and answer. And um, that's about it. Thank you.